Freedom Talk Radio presents Arts on the Lake. We're here in Lake Carmel at Arts on the Lake, the summer concert series in full swing. Normally, four concerts are held. This year, three times the amount. That's right, 12 concerts. Ed Durkee is the executive director. Ed, how'd you do it? Eric, I am not quite sure. Um, we decided in March that usually we do four concerts for the July series, but that what we could offer this year as we were opening up was essentially outdoor events. So we decided let's try as many concerts as we can get, and so we've done the three months of concerts. And it's been quite a stretch for a, a volunteer organization to try to do this, um, but we've also had great cooperation by the musicians. So they've come in at a much lower cost, which allows us to recoup some of the losses that we've had from the last year of COVID, which were, which were important for us and the crowds have been so enthusiastic yeah, it's been great especially tonight it is uh, a tribute to the 70s songwriters and of uh, Joni Mitchell and James Taylor who everybody loves and so we've got quite a big crowd and a wonderful night and we've run redid the stage area this year we did the lawn we've got electricity we've got a tent so it's really made a, a big difference in terms of the quality of the environment for people you even renamed the lawn, I understand. We did rename the lawn for a particular reason. We, Part of our world is we exist by sponsorship from all the businesses and the local community. And the Boyd Artesian Well Company um, did a tremendous job for us this year. They, We asked them to do a ditch. We thought, you know, I was thought it was going to be like a four-inch ditch. They bring down this big, huge backhoe. They're taking about a big ditch to get the electricity down. And then they decide to help and landscape the lake. It's been uh, the land. It's been really wonderful to have them here. So... It's the Boyd Family Concert Lawn, which is fantastic for us. So. Well, we're here in the middle of August already. Hard to believe the summer's almost I gone. Mean, it's crazy. And this month is a special... It's a special one for us in terms of the series of concerts. Uh, one of the other organizations or businesses that we want to support and are supporting us is the Limney Restaurant, which is actually right there mm -hmm. and it's a spectacularly good restaurant and we've been trying to work out a way to help each other promote one another in terms of the concerts and the restaurant so they are doing the sponsorship for the whole month and we're calling it the Limney Live at the Lake concert series which is great and um, so they are prominent in terms of our sponsorships but they're also offering a wonderful meal at a very low price a $30 prefix meal for at five o'clock which is amazing amazingly good deal and um, you know we're encouraging people to go over there and then they come back over here for the concert so it's been a really nice cooperative adventure for us overall we open up the program here as uh, Ed said, the uh, August the 13th, that's coming up in just a week. Yeah, that's in a week. Yeah. One third of the Sophie well, Band. She, what an unusual name, yeah. right? I, I can't tell you exactly why the name is that, but um, it's actually run by Jess Vanacoro and Matt Vanacoro. And Jess is the d executive director of Camp Herlick. Yes. So we are thrilled to have her and her band come. She's, we've been talking about it for a while, but it's another example of us trying to promote and work with our community and bring in a, a big part of what we're trying to do now is to bring in local music events and local bands because there are a lot of people who would love to play we have to find the place for it and this august has turned out to be the right spot for it with the limney sponsorship and then bringing in uh, other people from from around our area it's been a terrific opportunity for us and the following week is classic rock euphoria on yes. the 20th oh my gosh um, so they're a 50s and 60s band, and um, they have been performing throughout Putnam and the other counties around. They've um, been doing it for quite a long time. They're a wonderful band, and they basically get you, you know, moving your feet to the 50s and 60s stuff. So we're, we're, we're happy to have them. That's a good one. The following day on the 21st of August, Sumanagashi. Well, I've been practicing that all week. Yeah, Sumanagashi. So Arts in the Lake is both... It's a multi-dimensional art organization. So we really do offer many, many things. Um, art classes being one of them. We do band classes for the community, the kids at uh, during the summertime. We have uh, theater. We have many, many things going on. So one of the things that's happening now is this particular Sumigashi workshop, which is a very interesting thing because if you remember... When you used to open up old books, there was this beautiful uh, paper in the front of the book that had all this kind of swirl in it. Well, that's Sumanagashi uh, 
work. That's how it's done. It's by floating ink on, pa on in this particular case, water, and then you put paper on top. It's a very special process, and it creates these beautiful, beautiful things. So it's a nice workshop to be at. And that's at Saturday the 21st at 1 in the afternoon. Yep. Yep. And then the season winds down on August 27th. 27th, and that's, again, part of our local world. We're bringing in um, songsmiths and songwriters from the Hudson Valley area, and these uh, women is called uh, Susan Wright and her uh, compatriots, they're the Beacon Songsmiths. And um, it's part of the whole group of people who are out of Beacon mm -hmm. and um, who, who have developed, there's a huge kind of folk rock uh, community in the Hudson Valley and they are a part of that and we're thrilled to have them come over to do stuff with us too. How can the community in general help Arts on the Lake? Come. Just come, come to the events. Okay. I mean, that's the main thing for us is to, for you to, to be to joy that enjoy what we're doing. That's really what we're here for. Um, you know, our mission is to provide a home for the arts, let people create things. Um, it's really important for you to become members and then to donate when you can. We really we run entirely on memberships and donations and a few grants, very few grants. So. What we do is how we have to fund ourselves. Um, so anybody who would like to help, we have, it's a, basically an entirely volunteer organization. I always have stuff to do, um, and there's always room for more people to put, you know, put their hands in and make things happen. And the arts on the lake facility is magnificent, from an old firehouse. Yeah, from the old firehouse. So uh, it was renovated a number of years ago, but we're responsible for, well, we got a grant a $400,000 grant quite a number of years ago to do this. And then we are also slowly creating and renovating the inside. Last year we were able to renovate an upstairs and make it into a beautiful gallery space. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a Soho gallery space. And then we're trying to move on to work on this big large space, which we hope will become a theater space eventually. So we'll so, see, we'll see. Exciting things it happening. Money. It takes money and, and, and people. So Exciting things are happening at Arts on the Lake. Yeah. We'd like to thank Ed. For joining well, thank you us for, tonight. Thanks for having me here. It's great. It's wish terrific. you the best of luck. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's a wonderful thing, and uh, I hope you enjoy the music tonight and more, uh, more of this as you move forward with this project. It's great. Support Arts on the Lake. Either donations, come to the concerts, write a check. That's it. Write That's it. Check. Putnam Talk Radio, we thank you so much for bringing you Arts on the Lake here in Lake Carmel. For Ed Durkee, I'm Eric Gross. Until next time, bye bye now. individually great, amazing today. My name is Nassim Satrako, I'm the co-owner of uh, Limni, I own it with my wife. I've been in Putnam for uh, eight years now. I would consider generally every chef, cook, restaurant owner as an artist, right? Because that's part of what take raw products and create something that is unique. We do believe in, in bringing arts into this community. Educating the community, it brings culture to the community. You'll be able to meet artists that might be your waiters, bartenders, right? Every single thing that we do and touch here is somehow collaborated. This particular restaurant was a bet, literally a bet. Somebody bet me to run a restaurant. <laughs> I took the bet. Well, I started working as a waiter at 13 years of age. So that's when I started working in the restaurant world and I saw the craziness and I fell in love with it. But fast forward, I also wanted to cook my own food essentially or own my own restaurant only because I was a picky child. It's kind of like a dream come true. So when the bed came into play, it was a, to me, it was a sign from God. To my wife, I was crazy, aren't we all? So the, the beauty about this particular place, right, is uh, the mirrors reflect from any position you're going to sit in the dining room, the lake, right? So you always see the lake. Once you sit here, you forget about the world behind the restaurant, you forget where you're looking, and you just enjoy the scenery. That, on its own, was enough for us to, to take on the challenge. 
what we do here is we actually take you on a trip, right? So you may be able to see on the same menu a dish from Spain, like the Spanish shrimp, or you'll see and a special and you'll see a Yemenite braised short rib. Geographically, the two different locations, but they're all on the Mediterranean Sea. We have staples, but then you look at the specials and every single day we bring something new. In the back of Limni, we have a mulberry tree that is actually in season right now. So we use that. We do grow our own rosemary. We have a little greenhouse in the back. The experience that we offer is a loaded question. What we are offering is a playground. So the kitchen to me is a playground. Play with flavors. We try to give people a palate that they've never tasted before. And if they did, uh, the presentation would wow them, right? So it's all different aspects. To us, the little details that matter, we're not perfect by any means, but we always have somewhere to get to. And that's what drives me, right? Getting better, learning. What I don't know, I'll learn and I'll be best.